energy and cats. <laughs> cats. Yeah. It's the monkeys to us. That's it. But we filmed it in Oxford over one weekend and we just run around a lot, interspersed with some live tracks and, uh, you know, it's just very stupid. We, I had my little Renault and I remember uh, that starring in the film and it being a great weekend with all my friends and all Aidan's friends and all the friends of everyone that we knew coming along and just chipping in and filming. I remember running down the street with a blonde wig on. Did I? No, I had a green hat on. Dan had a blonde wig. I remember jumping in and out of the Renault with a saucepan in my hand for some reason. Guys, I've got it! Well, don't give it to me. No, listen, it's a magic formula for the band. It'll solve all our problems. We'll be famous. We'll be rich. We'll be famous and rich. Famous and rich? I, I don't know if I can handle both. Listen, I'd settle for rich and unknown. Well, I'd rather be famous and poor. I'd rather be poor and unknown. Peter, we are poor and unknown. I guess that's why I'm so happy. The Abingdon gig, yes, the worst gig in the history of rock music. Oh, God. What is there to say about the Abingdon gig? The main problem was Dan couldn't make it and Catherine couldn't make it. And we should have said no, but it was the first gig we were offered money to play. We were offered £50 and we spent £20 of it hiring a bass player. He assured us that he'd rehearsed and uh, and it was quite obvious that he hadn't because he was all over the place and we started one song, I can't remember what song it was, perhaps Daydream Believer or something, about three or four times. Even our friends who'd come along couldn't bring themselves to say it was good and <clears throat> that's how bad it was. Football ground, local football club, the bar of a local football club, three women at the bar, oh, two, two men at the bar, one dog, one woman, no, ba no Dan on base, so a man who we'd hired, who didn't know who we were paying, and he didn't know any of the songs, Aidan playing keyboards, ne I mean, need I go on, um, disaster from start to finish, greeted with a large round of indifference, I think, I seem to recall. The Shorty Blackwells, based in Oxford, uh, this Friday night at the East Oxford Community Centre on the Cowley Road. Shorty Blackwells. Oh, no, hilarious! I do not believe this is on video. Dan in the bath. There's no audience for miles. Where the hell are they? Oh, no. Back then, well we still do gags, but they're more kind of just thrown in and improvised now. Back then we, we'd actually generally script jokes for in between songs. Um, one of these jokes was me being wheeled on in a bathtub off from off stage. Going on stage, everyone's saying, well, what, what do you think you're doing? And I say, oh, you told me we were playing a gig in the bath. And they said, no, no, not in the bath, in bath. Boom, boom. Um, and <laughs> This 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 gag, the idea of being pushed on a bias had been mooted before, but I, I generally at first thought it was just a joke, you know, because, what, you're going to put a bath on wheels and push me on stage? I mean, I, I just, I generally did not think this would happen. Uh, but then it became clear that actually this was going to happen. But then I was still thinking, well, you know, frankly, I don't particularly want to be pushed on stage in a bath, but then I'm going to get a bathtub and get some wheels for it. You know, that's not going to happen. So again, I didn't say anything. So Liam and I ended up driving to this tip this tip um, and stealing or taking a bath that somebody had dumped in a tip from the tip um, and then putting it on some pram wheels as I recall which we had to get from Norfolk and we cleaned the bath and scrubbed it and I mean the absolute efforts we went to for one gag it defies belief now looking back on it and I remember I was worried when we were at the tip I was saying, is someone going to arrest us for stealing this? And it was a bathtub in a tip. And anyway, the joke, when it came, died a complete death. Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. Why? Hang on. What's going on? 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 What's
is happening? What is it? I don't believe this. My word. Get up here. Peter, Peter. Peter, what on earth are you doing? Well, you guys, you, you told, told me we were playing in the bath tomorrow, and you know, I just thought I'd get there early. Oh, Peter, 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 I said we were playing in bath tomorrow, not playing in the bath. I think that's so good, Dan. I know it has a real, um, uh, real Buzzcocks feel to it. Especially when we go, all the plasmodic yes. these, the game. Yeah, it's quite, yeah. well, that's quite like. So Aiden simply said, for the first rehearsal back after Christmas, beginning of 97, everyone just bring along one song to the band, or we'll do a tape of one demo, and we'll see what happens. I don't think there was ever a plan to carry on being a monkey's band in perpetuity. Perhaps in some ways, you know, we've always had a lot of talent in the band, and songwriting has been really strong. So it's a bit of a waste to spend your time doing other people's songs, great, great though they are. I enjoyed it when we actually started to bring um, some original songs into the set. Um, I, um, at the time I was writing my own songs, but because I was performing in my own band, I didn't feel particularly frustrated as a writer. It's quite enjoyable to perform other people's material as well as your own. So it's, I suppose, a bit of a mixture. It was a great time, it was good fun. To, to be the monkeys and to, and to play those roles. Um, but I think, you know, we're, we're, we're very strong as, as a band with our own material and that's, that's what we've decided now and that's the, that's the way it should be. It's great from time to time though to put one or two of the monkey songs in because the kids love it. Everything we recorded that day was not there anymore. It, it, it just disappeared. Um, we started recording Suitcase uh, at Mike's house. Uh, Mike's got a little studio in the basement of his house where he does his own music. Um, and he would agreed to uh, help us record and produce some of the, uh, the first CD which became Suitcase. So. Um, Liam, Aidan, Saul and I went there one weekend to uh, start recording some tracks and the first track we were going to record was uh, Would You Ever, which uh, became the first track on the album. Just, just, I suppose just to show that you can spend tons of money on equipment and it can still all go wrong when we recorded uh, on the new 8-track uh, digital recorder for a whole day only to find out it wouldn't save. Marvellous piece of technology, eight tracks, digital, uh, you can put all these different tracks onto all these different things, mix it down, 64 virtual tracks, but when you switch it off it forgets everything. It's alright as long as you don't switch it off, uh, or use it, that was the other point that was wrong with it, if you use it it goes wrong. Now this was very difficult to take, but we kind of regrouped, Saul couldn't make it the second day, but manfully accepted that we'd replace him with some synth drums. Because I think it had been quite difficult to uh, for me to get the the thing done, um, and to this day conspiracy theories still abound. My, my drumming was so shite it was wiped uh, accidentally, um, and then of course <laughs> a drum machine was used and it sounded bloody good. And we got up the next morning, and instead of just recording one note and trying to save it, rather stupidly, we recorded the whole song again. And at about 1.30 in the afternoon, we tried to save it again, and it wiped it again. At which point, I was very downhearted and disheartened, and I do recall, I do believe it is true, that I did go and lock myself in the bathroom and <laughs> not want to come out. And just, I remember, I think I was kneeling on the bathroom floor. I don't think I was crying, but I was very upset, and Liam had to come and stand outside the bathroom and talk me into coming out. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, sometimes it's just, I have to deal with the, the, uh, the uh, extreme emotional range that, that we in the Symington clan have. So, Mr. Symington, mm. 
Are you looking forward to your upcoming role in this uh, Master Hall movie? I am indeed. Uh, I was very honoured to be asked to appear in a Dan Are you taking a production. Are you taking a method approach to your role? Or? Um, I'm not. What exactly is method acting? Uh, I don't know. You really sort of uh, live the character beforehand. Not really, but I have. <laughs> in that, to... Well, you probably are in that you live in this flat and your room does look like this. But what I've tried to do is grow. Uh, I'll ignore that. It was called a perfect example, I think, which is a name of a Huskadoo song. I just adopted. Um, and uh, when I wrote it, it was with no idea of actually ever really filming it uh, initially. Um, and and it, it was a kind of offbeat comedy. Hello? Uh, I think we shot one day, shot a couple of scenes, just Aiden. Aiden was going to play the main character. Um, I was going to play a character who wasn't in that much, but I was going to do most of the directing. You know, I didn't really know how to direct, I thought I'd just make it up as I go along. And we, and we filmed one day uh, in Aiden's flat, but then he had to leave his flat, and for consistency reasons, obviously we needed to film other scenes there, so we, we thought, well, well, we'll wait until he gets into another flat, and then I think, I don't know, I can't remember, we kind of went off the idea, or the momentum was gone, or I decided the script wasn't much cop, I can't actually remember the reasons, but... It, it all that remains somewhere, and I think I'm, I might actually have the tape somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, there, there are a few scenes we shot just of Aiden in his flat, um, but that's all that all that exists of a, a serious attempt to make a movie. Action.